Eastern Connecticut was a hotbed of activity during the American Revolution. And at the center of all the action was the city of Norwich. Connecticut was home to many patriots who fought during the Revolution. But in the years leading up to the war, many of those same patriots banded together to take the first of many stands against the British Parliament. This is a look at the Sons of Liberty in Norwich and Connecticut. The year was 1765, 10 years before the outbreak of the American Revolution at Lexington and Concord, Great Britain passed the Stamp Act, a measure that levied a direct tax on all paper goods traded in the 13 colonies. This tax was a first for the colonies, and for Connecticut, the act was completely illegitimate. Not only did the 13 colonies have no representation in the British Parliament, but Connecticut was one of only a few colonies that elected all of its state and local officials by popular vote. For many, Parliament's Stamp Act was a direct affront to Connecticut's political sovereignty. By the spring of 1765, well-connected men, including Samuel Adams and John Hancock, formed a secret society in Boston known as the Sons of Liberty, with the clear objective of organizing resistance to the Stamp Act in an attempt to repeal the act altogether. In the summer of 1765, anti-Stamp Act sentiment was brewing in the most patriotic circles in Connecticut. As the Sons of Liberty continued to organize themselves in the state, they set their sights on three main objectives. Prevent the distribution of stamps in Connecticut, galvanize Connecticut residents against the act, and remove their political opponents from positions of power. The major figures who led this movement in eastern Connecticut included Israel Putnam, Hugh Ledley, and John Durkee. John Durkee was born in Wyndham and lived in Norwich in the Bean Hill neighborhood, and he became the leader of the Norwich Sons of Liberty. Durkee was a decorated veteran of the French and Indian War and had earned the rank of major by the war's end. In August of 1765, British-appointed tax collectors found themselves on the receiving end of harassment and targeted criticisms that were meant to intimidate them into resigning their positions. Here on the Norwich Town Green, the Norwich Patriots burned an effigy of Connecticut stamp master Jared Ingersoll. By September of 1765, Ingersoll decided to travel from New Haven to Hartford to plead with Governor Thomas Fitch for assistance. It was at this time that the Norwich Sons of Liberty saw their window of opportunity. John Durkee mounted a horse, set out from Norwich with a band of over 500 men, and intercepted Ingersoll in Wethersfield on September 19, 1765. The Sons and their allies confined Ingersoll to a nearby tavern and compelled him to resign his position as stamp master. Though reluctant at first, Ingersoll conceded to the Band of Patriots and was taken to Hartford to formalize his concession to the Connecticut General Assembly. By February of 1766, Parliament repealed the Stamp Act. Shortly after the Stamp Act was repealed, the Sons of Liberty erected a Liberty Pole on the Norwich Town Green as an added symbol of defiance to the British Parliament. The Sons continued to build upon this momentous victory by mobilizing a political faction which swept the statewide elections of 1766, including the governorship. The victory over the Stamp Act sent a clear message to the British. Americans were not as compliant as they initially thought. Over the next 10 years, Norwich patriots in league with their fellow patriot communities continued to resist the efforts of British taxation and governmental interference until the ultimate outbreak of war on April 19, 1775. John Durkee's leadership of the Sons and his abilities as a military commander led him to a distinguished career in the Continental Army. He fought in many of the famous early battles and was injured at the Battle of Monmouth in 1778. He was discharged from the army shortly thereafter before passing away on May 29, 1782. He rests in the Norwich Town Colonial Burying Ground, a symbol of how liberty-loving patriots in Connecticut and America began their march to independence.